Hi, my name is Liz Shanks, and I'd like to welcome you to Liz's Book Snuggery, which features some of the best reads in children's picture books. Our book today is called The Christmas Cat by Marianne McDonald and illustrated by Amy June Bates. Have you ever seen the drawings of the La Madonna del Gatto or the Madonna of the Cat by Leonardo da Vinci? It seems that Madonna fascinated him as Mr. da Vinci made many drawings of her between the years 1480 and 1481. Just go online if you want to take a peek at them, or I have one right here to show you. As you can see, it shows baby Jesus on the knee of his mother holding a cat in a rather tight embrace, as kids will do. And the cat, of course, as you can imagine, seems bent on escape. In fact, there is a medieval legend that talks about a litter of kittens born in the same stable in Bethlehem on the same night as the infant Jesus. And if that were true, might not the two have become, well, friends? Mary Ann McDonald's Sweet Christmas Cat Tale, and that's tale spelled T-A-L-E, imagines what might have happened if the legend were true. One day the author, Miss McDonald, was visiting the Metropolitan Museum in New York where she discovered the drawings of La Madonna del Gato. And that discovery, in turn, inspired the story you are about to hear. And now, The Christmas Cat by Mary Ann McDonald, illustrated by Amy June Bates. Jesus was beautiful, like all babies, and like all babies, he cried. The night he was born, nothing Mary did could comfort him. She wrapped him in a warm blanket. She fed him. She rocked him. Still, he kept on crying. Every animal in the stable tried in turn to soothe him. Doves fluttered down from the rafters, settling on the creaky stable door. They cooed and cooed, but they could not stop the baby from crying. The cow mooed low, as she had done for her very own calf, but Jesus cried still louder. The donkey brayed a lullaby, but that made Jesus cry loudest of all. Then, a curious kitten crept out of the shadows. Step by careful step, he edged toward Jesus, reaching Mary's feet. He crouched, wiggled, and pounced lightly onto her lap. Rubbing his tiny nose against the back of Mary's hand, the kitten showed that he too wanted to try his turn at soothing the baby. Mary opened her shawl. The kitten edged in and nuzzled Jesus' neck. Then he began to purr, a calm, contented purr that came from deep inside. Jesus' tiny hand touched the kitten, and his crying grew softer and softer and softer. And soon, it stopped. The purring faded away, too. And in the blessed silence that followed, every tired creature in the stable was soon sleeping soundly in the starlight. The babies grew close as two creatures can be, and before long, the kitten became a cat. Jesus watched him as he chased butterflies in the tall grass and climbed high in the fig tree. And when Mary put Jesus down to rest in his cradle, it was the cat's turn to watch over the baby and purr him to sleep. One day, an angel came to warn Joseph that terrible King Herod was looking for the baby Jesus. Jealous Herod had heard rumors about Jesus that this baby would one day be king. Herod's soldiers, the angel said, were racing toward Bethlehem, hoping to find the baby Jesus and destroy him. To escape, the little family would have to flee on their donkey into Egypt right away. It would be safest to travel quietly at night in the darkness when the soldiers could not see them. Hurry, Mary, said Joseph. We must leave now, this very night. Rushing, Mary and Joseph packed and loaded what little they could on their donkey. Where is Jesus' cat? Mary asked just before the sun went down. We must find him. 
So Mary and Joseph combed through the tall grass, searched the shadows near the fire, looked high in the branches of the fig tree, but the cat was nowhere to be found. We can't leave him behind, cried Mary. We must, said Joseph. It's too dangerous to stay here, even one day longer. So just as the sun set on the hills behind Bethlehem, the little family set off on their journey. The desert air was chilly, and Mary held Jesus close, hoping the rocking gait of the donkey would lull him to sleep. But Jesus needed his cat. He clenched his small fists and screamed. Campfires glowed on the nearby hillside. Were Herod's soldiers sheltering there with their swords? What would they do if they heard Jesus' cries? I wish the cat were with us, Mary whispered to Joseph. But Joseph only nodded, his eyes constantly scanning the horizon. But the cat was with them after all. To make sure he wasn't left behind, he had hidden in the basket tied to the donkey's warm flank. When he heard Jesus crying, he woke up and began to wail. Jesus shrieked with delight, reaching toward the basket with chubby arms. And with one strong leap, the cat jumped into them. Shh, shh, whispered Mary as she cuddled the squirming, licking, loving friends together. When at last the two settled down, the cat again began to purr. The rhythmic rumbling, as always, soothed the baby, and Jesus fell sound asleep. Inside Mary's shawl, he and his pet curled closely together, keeping each other warm as the donkey carried them far from Herod's soldiers and their awful swords, far away to the safe land of Egypt. Love had saved them. Story, story, listen.